We have about a month or so before the official start of the GCSEs and A-level timetables. And now that the Easter holidays are finished as well, you should have quite of an idea on where you are and what you need to get done. So this video is going to be a bit of a reminder, but it's going to be an important one, whether or not you're in GCSE time or A-level time or even your year 12 end of year exams if you're having them as well. This is a serious, serious time and hopefully some of the tips I give you now and some of the reminders I give you now help you to become more productive and get the work that you need to do done. Now, firstly, my biggest piece of of advice and if you don't know this already I don't know what you're doing is to start questions I do not care whether or not you've finished all the content or if you haven't even begun revising yet you're at a stage now where you've got so many questions that need to be done that if you keep it off even longer you just won't have the time and the best way to revise is to replicate what you're going to be doing in the exam which is answering questions for every one of your subjects you should right now at least be doing questions because if you do questions you can see exactly where you need more improvement on and then you can go over a topic again and then come back to the questions again it should be questions first now before you had all the time in the world to just go over every topic at your own pace and stuff like that now can you just focus on questions as many questions as you can that should be your revision if you've done two hours of revision where you've just sat there and you've watched a video that isn't good revision anymore but I mean it never was in the first place so make sure you're doing questions now for every topic you should be getting an idea of how you are with that topic by doing the questions and that's the only way you can really have a clear idea in whether or not you're going to do well in that topic in the exam don't make the mistake of being like okay there's a pack of questions here but I'm not going to complete them yet I'm only going to complete them when there's about two weeks left or just don't just don't do that if there's questions available for you which there's so many of you cannot run out and the most important part of doing those questions is to see what you got wrong and to see why you got them wrong that is the most important part if you're getting every single question right that is a good thing but at the same time it might mean that you're not focusing on the right area so if you're finding that you're getting lots of questions wrong at least least you now know an area where you're going to have to target more revision towards and an area that you're weak at. That's the most important thing right now, to do those questions to see which topics you're stronger in and which topics you need more work on. I think the most important thing you need to do in this last month or so is to have a clear plan of what you're going to do for each day, right? Not for a month in advance to write every single thing you're going to do in each day. That's quite ineffective in my opinion. Instead, I think the longest you should plan out for is a week. Don't do any more than that. Don't make two week, three week revision plans because you're probably not going to stick to them. And if you start not sticking to the first couple of days, the entire thing's gone in the bin. Trust me, that's usually how it works. But if you know you can stick to them, even then I wouldn't recommend it. It's easier to be able to adapt your thing and adapt your plan if you have only a week in advance or only a few days and stuff. Bare minimum, you should be making a plan for each day. So when you wake up, for you to write on a piece of paper or anything, what you're gonna get done in that day, what the most important thing you're gonna get done and everything else that you want to try and get done as well. And it's okay if you don't do all of those things. In fact, 99% of the time, I set myself too many tasks for the day and I only end up doing about like half of them or like 70% of them that's okay that's probably 70% more than you would have done in the first place if you just had no plan and you're just winging it halfway through I've also realized one thing and that's to get some sort of revision done early in the morning now obviously not during school times that's not as easy to do but when you're off school in the weekends or for study leave or anything like that make sure you get at least a tiny bit of revision done in the mornings because that usually decides how you're going to spend the rest of your day if you start the morning by doing about half an hour or one hour of revision only that can at least put you in a mood where you feel productive for the day and you're more likely to get even more done. If you start off the day by playing games, watching a movie, anything like that, you're going to be in this slump for the rest of the day and it's just going to continue going. And then maybe perhaps you do some last minute revision at like 10, 11 o'clock, right? And you do it for like three hours or so. Then you end up oversleeping again for the next day and the cycle repeats. It's not very effective. I would say it's better to do even a tiny bit in the morning, but then to spend the rest of the day planning out what you're going to do and stuff. All the revision you're going to be doing now, I really, really recommend for you to put all your effort into it. So whenever you're revising, to be 100% revising, and whenever you're not revising, to be 0% revising, right? So basically what I'm trying to say is to split apart the time you're revising and the time you're not revising, rather than 50 50 all the time, because you get nowhere near as much work done if you aren't fully focusing when you're revising. One way that's easy to do this is to physically distance yourself when you're revising from where you normally are. So for example, going to the library, revising for a couple hours there, then when you come home or whatever you want to do, you can do it, right? And you won't have the guilt of, oh, I didn't revise enough or anything like that because you know you did revise so whenever you're trying to revise don't just sit there and just kind of work for a bit and then procrastinate a bit and then come back to work and like it's really ineffective if you do that what I recommend for you guys to do is to set yourself specific times when you're going to revise and then set yourself specific times when you're not going to the only reason this is really a tip is to help yourself continue and sustain the revision over this long period of time because a month is still a month it's still a lot of time and if you just fully focus on one day you're gonna not be able to focus the next day and it's just will 
be this repeat cycle, right? So if you make it clear to yourself when you're going to revise and make it clear to yourself when you're not going to revise, it's so much easier to keep up. As a source of your revision, one other thing you should be doing is going back over past papers that you've done and past mock exams that you've done and past tests or anything in score that you've done and tried to find any patterns within those. And by now, you probably have done all the testing that you're going to be doing on behalf of the score, right? Use all that material if you still have it from your mock exams, from any past exams that you've done during school and see what things you might be consistently getting wrong. For me, for example, I've realized that I am so rubbish with the required practicals. I can never seem to get the answers right. And I've always thought it was the topic itself, but it always seems to be my understanding of the practical. So for me, that's something I'm going to be putting more effort towards, trying to really understand those required practicals, not only for biology, but for chemistry as well, because it's actually just awful for me at the moment. This isn't a source of revision. This is just a way to see what you're going to revise for. Before we continue on with the video, I just want to talk to you guys about our sponsor. It's a product from New Yes again. I don't know if you remember, I collaborated with them quite a while back. This is the Scan Reader Pen. This pen is really useful if you struggle with dyslexia and if you have reading difficulties, because what you can do is when you have some text in front of you, for example, in a piece of paper, you can use this pen to highlight it and read it out to you so you don't have to worry about misreading anything. This isn't only for English. This can scan up to 55 different languages and can translate as well to up to 112 different languages. And 19 of those you can do without any Wi-Fi access. So all the most common ones you should be able to do even if you're out and about. The pen also offers photo translation so you can take a photo of wherever you want to translate and translate it just like that. And on top of the phonetic and photo translation features that it offers, it also has five different dictionaries. Let me show you some of the different dictionaries that they have. You've got the English one and you've got all these other ones here as well that you can access. So lots of features jam-packed into the small little device. It's very useful especially if you do have those reading difficulties or if you just want something to translate some text for you and to also store as a dictionary. This is also the product for that so check that out down below in the description and we'll get straight back on with the video. And now last tip that I have for you guys. This is something that if you haven't done please please do. Check your exam timetable. Check when your exams are. What is your first exam? If you don't know that's not really a problem now but once you've got a week two weeks before your exam you should really be splitting your revision in terms of the exams on week one the exams on week two and so on right because there's no point when you have a week left before your GCSEs to be doing revision for an exam that's at the very end because all the exams are spread a lot. At this moment because you still have a month you should still go over all those topics and all those papers but this is only something where once you have two weeks to start focusing more towards those first couple exams and then to start directing it all on an exam by exam basis right your revision should be okay I've got this exam coming up I'm gonna revise for this exam but at the same time I've got another exam coming up on the next day so I'm also gonna do a bit of revision on that exam that's how your revision should be not yet but just have that in mind so what I recommend you guys to do if you haven't already check out that exam timetable it should be online easy to access but you've also probably been given sheets that have exactly when all your different exams are as well and yeah those are my tips nothing too special just as a reminder just so you guys are knowing what you're doing and for you guys to keep going it's only a month now just whenever it gets long remember the summer is going to be great you're gonna have nothing to revise anymore you're in like the very final stages now so best of luck to all of you guys who have exams and i'll see you guys very very soon thanks for watching